Hello everybody and welcome. This is the introductory video for ETAP 523 Media in Teaching and Learning for Fall 2020. This video is a companion piece to the course syllabus, so you should watch this and then read that. And hopefully when you're done with all that, you will have an idea of what the course outline is going to look like. You will know what to expect this semester. And at the very least, you will know how to contact me and ask for clarification if you still are confused about anything. So first off, let me introduce myself. Hi, I am your instructor for this course. My name is Sturdy. Uh, just call me by my first name, please. This is a graduate course, and so as far as I'm concerned, we are all colleagues here. I am moderating the discussion, but this is just a conversation among colleagues. Uh, if you really don't like that level of informality, I will answer to any of these but my preference is to just have all of us on a first name basis working together. A little bit about my background. I am a fourth year doctoral student in the department here. My research interest is in gamification and differentiation in the design of learning environments and the ways that students and instructors make decisions about the learning process. I started out my grad school career doing an MA in English, and then from there stepped off that track and sidestepped over into library science and did an MS in that. And that is actually where my formal professional training comes from, is from a librarian perspective. So I may sometimes have a slightly different take on instruction and instructional design than those of you who have trained originally as classroom teachers and have specialized in that from the beginning. And then after library school and working in libraries for a while, I came back and entered the PhD program here at Albany a few years ago. And so I have been in and out of grad school for a very long time. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, just as the finish line is coming into sight, the entire field of education and instructional technology and design is just wildly upending itself. So part of why I said earlier that we are all colleagues is that this school year is very much uncharted territory <laughs> for everybody, I think. And I expect that you all will be bringing your own insights and experiences and ideas to help us all get our heads around some of the instructional challenges and problems that we are working through as a profession this school year. So anyway, that is probably more than enough about me. So let's get back to talking about what you can expect in this course. First, as outlined in the course information and the week one readings folder, the framing theory that I have used in developing this course is a model called TPAC for technology technological, pedagogical, and content knowledge. That is gone into in much more detail in the next video, so I am not really going to dwell on it right now. But some of the consequences in terms of major themes that come out of that are listed over here on the right. So the first is multimodality. This is a media studies course. Multimodality refers to the issue of examining how information and narratives and ideas can be communicated in different ways. And so we'll be looking at that as a recurring theme throughout the course. Second is the idea that teaching is a type of design work. If I have one criticism 
of the way teachers and educators are generally trained. It's that we're not taught to think of teaching as designing, and we're not taught to think in design terms. And so I am hopefully going to remediate that for you throughout this course. And we're going to dig deep into some ideas and models from across the field of design as we go forward. And then the third theme is the idea of situated learning and also of situated teaching. What that means is I'm going to be throwing a lot of kind of big ideas and models about media and instruction and learning at you. And all of those are only as good as how you can apply them to specific contexts and specific tasks in your work as a teacher. And so it's all always going to come back to, but how do I apply this and how do I see this happening in my classroom? So those three themes you should just keep bearing in mind regularly and returning to as we go through the semester. Next up, a quick overview of the work and assessment that you'll be doing in the course. There are two basic categories of assessment that you'll need to do. The first are weekly check-ins. These are short weekly public-facing assignments. Uh, they're worth 40 points each week over 15 weeks, um, and they are just quick formative assessments that are designed to get you thinking and responding on a regular basis and talking to each other frequently. Then the other type of assessment, these are projects. There are six of them in total. Each is worth up to 100 points. You will be going through and doing initial drafts for the different project assignments every two weeks during the first part of the semester. And then in the second part of the semester, you will revise all of those initial drafts and then submit your final portfolio at the end. Your course grade is calculated out of a thousand points. This is just a pretty standard hundred point grading model multiplied by 10 because I find that's a little clearer and more accessible some of the time. But if you add up all of the check-ins and all of the projects, they actually add up to more than that. They add up to 1200 possible points. So as I mentioned right at the beginning, my main interest in instructional design and educational research is in differentiation. And one of the ways I am going to model that in this course is the idea that there are no mandatory assessments. So because there are more points available than you actually need, that means that you have some discretion in deciding where you're going to focus your energy and which assessments you are going to commit to finishing by the end of the semester. So if there's a week where you're just really busy with other stuff and you don't have time to get to the check-in for this course, that's fine. You can make up the points elsewhere. Or if one of the projects really just isn't very relevant to you or applicable to what you're looking to get out of this course, then you don't necessarily have to do the final revision for that. And you can focus on completing other assessments in order to demonstrate what you are thinking and learning. Now, this doesn't mean that you should expect to do less work in this course than you would in a typical course. If anything, it means I'm actually going to be assigning more work over the semester than you're accustomed to. But you have some discretion in deciding what is really important 
and what is going to best reflect your thoughts and your learning by the end of the semester. I've broken the assignments down this way to reflect different aspects of presence. This is a concept that is pretty popular in online learning research, and there are multiple different presences that have been found to be important to uh, successful learning in an online environment. One of them is social presence, the sense that the other people that you're reading and talking and responding to through the discussion forums are real people and that you're part of a community. And that's kind of taken care of, I hope, with the weekly check-ins. And then another form of presence is cognitive presence. That's the sense that you are engaging with the material. The material you are engaging with is a coherent body of knowledge, and you have a sense of the concepts all relating together in a logical and orderly way in the curriculum. And that I hope, is reflected in the projects. There's also teaching presence, which is for me to worry about in this class. And some scholars also argue that there are other presences, like learning presence, which is related to self-regulation and self-efficacy. But that's another class, frankly. One last thing just to explain very quickly about the way the course is set up. We're going to be, instead of a more typical linear module structure, we're actually going to go through the content twice, so in two cycles. So the first cycle, weeks one to nine, we're going to be visiting each of the different areas and types of media, graphics, audio, video, interactive media, as well as some general discussion, more general discussion of media literacy. We're going to do initial passes through all of those in weeks one to nine. We're going to do whole class discussions during that time of just kicking around all of these new ideas. And you're going to generate a bunch of rough drafts for various different projects uh, pretty quickly as we go. And I want to emphasize, these are rough drafts that you're going to be doing. I'm a big believer in iterative design, which is just get something out there, get it into the world, and then you can evaluate what's working, what isn't working. You can make adjustments and push out a version two. So that's cycle one. And then in cycle two, we are going to return to each medium again for some further consideration now that we've got a basic vocabulary and a basic understanding of the whole landscape. Uh, so we'll go into more advanced readings in each area. Uh, the check-ins and the week-to-week -week work will be in smaller work groups during this cycle uh, that will be sorted by interest and priority. So you'll have some chance to weigh in on what you're particularly interested in workshopping and who you're particularly interested in working with during this cycle. And then at the end of it, you will produce your final project portfolio that will be the capstone on the course. So that is everything I think you need to know about the course really quickly. This has gone over in more detail in the syllabus and the course information folder on Blackboard, so you should also read through those as well. And just to wrap up, I know that this is going to be a very uncertain and very stressful school year, I think, for all of us. I think that anyone in the teaching profession, no matter what your particular circumstances are this fall, is just dealing with a lot of uncertainty and pressure. And so I hope that this is going to be a course where we're all going to be able to come together and vent and share some of these issues with each other and offer support and solutions and ideas for each other as we go along.
If you do still have any questions after you have watched this and read through the course information folder, go ahead and email me anytime. I try to get back to all emails within 24 hours, although I do occasionally take a Saturday off. Um, once you have read through everything and had any lingering questions answered, please go in the week one folder, introduce yourself to your classmates and to me for that matter, and start taking a look through the materials for week one of the course. And I will Look forward to seeing your introductions, and I will talk to you again in the next video and on the discussion forums.